Hi, I'm Mr. Simons, and I recently ran a poll on my YouTube channel asking you for what videos you would most likely to see, what videos you would most likely like to see, and that the overwhelming suggestion was some more updates about the Australian economy. So, this video here is an update on the Australian economy, just like the majority of you asked for, as of June 2021. And that the key piece of data that we're going to be looking at is the March quarter Australian GDP figures, which came out in June. So yes, GDP figures are a bit delayed, but they're the best we've got. And they're extremely important in trying to understand exactly what is happening with the Australian economy. So the main point of this video is to give you an understanding and some specific stats, figures and views to include in your short answer and particularly essay responses for economics, particularly with the trials coming up soon, because there won't be another look at GDP until September. And I'll cover that towards the end of the video. So let's start at the top and work our way down. I've got a bunch of notes because I don't want you to miss out on anything and I'm going to forget something unless I've written it down. So the first thing to think about is that COVID-19 has had an enormous impact on the Australian economy. Prior to COVID, the last time Australia experienced a recession was in 1990-1991, so a long time ago. And so in terms of COVID, so you had the Australian economy doing very well, economic growth was not amazing, but we'd had a long period without a recession. And then we get a situation where in the June quarter of 2020, so the three months to June in 2020, GDP falls by 7% which makes sense because that was really the peak of the pandemic in Australia as of June 2021, and that that was the series of nationwide lockdowns, business shutdowns, rising unemployment, a very serious stoppage in terms of economic activity, shutdown in travel, all of those things. In terms of the most recent look at GDP, which is for the March quarter of 2021, that Australia's economy grew by 1.8% in the March quarter, and this was higher than economists' expectations. So the Australian economy expanded in the three months to March of 2021. And this is really interesting for a number of different reasons, but I think mostly because it shows that the Australian economy now is growing faster than it did before the pandemic. So let me just repeat that that Australia's economic growth now, as of June 2021, is stronger, faster, uh, stronger and faster than it was before the pandemic hit. So we as economists would sit back and be like, well, why is this the case? Is this a surprise? What's going on? How do we actually understand this? Part of the reason is that there is a lingering impact of government stimulus. So the federal government in Australia has spent a lot of money trying to ameliorate the worst impacts of the pandemic. So in terms of the size of government spending, that according to the most recent budget, so the 2021-22 federal budget, that the federal government will spend $311 billion on its response to COVID-19 in total. Now that's an enormous amount of money. And that in terms of that spending... We've got JobKeeper, that was worth $89 billion. There's also been the increased supplement for job seekers, so the higher coronavirus supplement payments. And there's also been tax cuts and tax offsets. So all of this spending, even though it is decreasing, is still having an impact on the economy. That you can't just flick the switch and, oh, okay, now the government spending is no longer having an impact that we've got the flow and effects from what happened in 2020. And also the government is still spending money. The government is still running a budget deficit and is forecasting deficits for the next few years, even though they are shrinking. So part of the reason for higher economic growth is higher government spending. And if you go back to the aggregate demand identity of AD equals C plus I plus G plus X minus M, that G is higher and that is pushing up aggregate demand 
and the level of economic growth in the Australian economy. Okay, so why else is growth so strong at the moment? Part of the reason is that the private sector in Australia is now coming back in force. That prior to now, the main driver of economic activity in Australia was government spending. I mean, everything else was shut down. Everyone was relying on government payments and government support to actually do anything during the pandemic, to actually have income in some cases, to actually maintain a job. Now we're seeing a situation where government spending can reduce and is being reduced. Just check out the budget numbers on the size of the deficit. And now the private sector is picking up the slack. So in terms of the slack, it's saying, oh, okay, so the Australian economy has a little bit of spare capacity or a lot of spare capacity in some case. And that what is now happening is that the government was picking up the slack, making it tight and successful, and now the private sector can step in and start to do that. So we're seeing that in terms of two elements of aggregate demand, in terms of investment and in terms of consumption. When we talk about investment, we're talking about private investment, business investment. So public sector, that's government spending. Private sector, that's private companies. And that is what we're focusing on here. So in terms of why private investment is picking up now, Part of it is that you've got some government policies that are actually encouraging investment, such as home builder, and that you've also got a situation where as the economy gets stronger and interest rates remain at historic lows, then businesses get excited about investment. They're like, now is the time to start borrowing money and investing and buying capital equipment and all sorts of other things so that the climate has changed to now be very positive towards private investment. The other thing we can think about, which is very much the C in the aggregate demand identity, the consumption, is that as Australia returns back to normal, as the kind of threat of a COVID outbreak fades, then more people are resuming their pre-COVID lifestyles. More people are going out and spending money. More people are going to restaurants, cafes, hotels, taking um, trips to other states, that they are doing the kind of consumption activities that they had stopped or at least slowed during the worst of the pandemic. And something to think about in general is that consumption is two thirds of gross domestic product. So when consumption rises, that is a really big push in a positive sense to Australia's GDP levels. Something you can also talk about, which I think is a very useful expression, um, and it comes from this ABC article that I'll link to in the show notes, which is really the inspiration for this video, is that Australia's economic recovery is becoming much more broad based. And I'm not making up this term. This is a term that economists use. So for example, if an economic recovery is very narrowly based, it means that there's only really a few drivers or one driver of the economic recovery. So previously, we might have said that the Australian government, its spending, its measures, its use of expansionary fiscal policy, that was really driving the economic recovery. Now we can say the economic recovery is becoming more broad based so that not only is government spending contributing, we've now got consumption, we've now got investment. So we've got the private sector and the public sector are now contributing to the economic recovery. So it is a more broad based economic recovery. The advantage of this as well is that if the private sector is doing more, well, the government can do less and maybe the government can stop spending sooner, reduce the size of its deficits, reduce the size of its debt, those kind of things. That might be possible if the private sector is there picking up more of the slack. But I don't want you to think about it all being rosy and perfect and really smooth sailing back to the kind of records of growth that Australia used to have that there are still risks. And we've seen that recently, when I mean recently, I'm talking about June 2021, that the lockdown in Melbourne, based on an outbreak of COVID cases there, that every time there is an outbreak and then the governments have to go into lockdown, that has a very serious impact on the economy 
and therefore economic recovery. For example, groups like KPMG, Ernst & Young, uh, NAB, they were talking about the fact that the cost of the Victorian lockdown, the most recent one, is about $100 million a day because of all the shutdowns and economic disruptions. If there are more outbreaks and more lockdowns, that this could be very negative for Australia's economic recovery. We don't know the impact of the most recent Victorian lockdown in terms of GDP, and we won't find out until later this year. But the important point, economists say, is that the government maintains stimulus, so the government keeps the public sector supporting economic growth, and that Australia is able to increase its vaccination rates, which will then reduce the chances of further outbreaks and provide some consistency in terms of economic recovery. Those are some key things that economists say are very important. The government stays with its expansionary fiscal policy and that there is a greater uptake in terms of vaccinations. That will help to reduce the risks of disruptions to Australia's economic recovery. So where to from here? We will get our next look at GDP in September. So the June quarter figures, fingers, the June quarter figures will come out in September 2021. And that will give us a better indication of how the Australian economy is tracking and the resilience of the economic recovery. I'll put a list of sources in the show notes so you can go and check out the references to some of the information that I've talked about. Keep in mind the risks. I think this will be really important to include in terms of trial essays, in terms of the outlook for the Australian economy. Yes, things are positive, but if outbreaks take place, that will slow down economic recovery, particularly because lockdowns in Victoria costing $100 million per day, that kind of thing. That will be some really good perspective and evidence. Okay, if you've got any questions or comments, put them in the comments. Please like if this video has been helpful in any way, and I'll see you in the next one.